دلوقتي بقى بيشرفنا الدكتور محمد البنهاوي بيه وهيكلمنا عن الكالسي بلاكسز ان ابديت. السلام عليكم جميعا. الحقيقه انا بشكر طبعا اخويا الكبير الدكتور مصطفى على الدعوه والاهم من الدعوه ان هو حرصه على استمرار وتطور الجمعيه المصريه الحقيقه. هو الحقيقه من غير مصطفى ما كانش في الجمعيه دي. فاحنا بنشكره جدا على ان هو بيرعانا وبيعمل على تطور واستمرار الجمعيه دي. ربنا دي الجمعيه الام احنا كلنا تربينا وكبرنا في ظل الجمعيه دي. اشكرك يا دكتور مصطفى. انا موضوعي النهارده موضوع اسمه كالسي فيلاكسس ده الاولد نيم انما الكرنت نيم اللي هو كالسيفيك يوريميك ارتريلوبسي الكالسي فيلاكسس دي اتس ديس اوردر اوف كالسيفيكيشن اند ثرومبوزيس اوف ذا ديرمال اند فانيكولار ارتريولز اندينج ان تو بينفول اسكيميك سكين ليجنز الكالسي فيلاكسس دي اتس ديفايدد ان تو two types the uremic calcific arteriolopathy or calciphylaxis occurring in end stage renal diseases patients on hemodialysis but it can occur in early chronic kidney disease patients and even in patients with normal kidney functions and it is termed non-uremic calcific arteriolopathy there are multiple risk factors for calciphylaxis, starting by the patients on end-stage renal disease on dialysis, females, obese, hypercalcemia, hyperphosphatemia, hyperparathyroidism. Among the autoimmune connective tissue diseases is SLE and the protein C deficiency, and even some medications may induce calciphylaxis like warfarin, intravenous iron and steroid therapy. These are examples of the ischemic ulcerative lesions of calciphylaxis. The calciphylaxis presents clinically with painful plaques or subcutaneous nodules which associated with a violaceous mottled skin lesions and progressing to non-healing, very painful ulcers. Calciphylaxis has two types, a central type and a peripheral type. The central type predilects the areas of greatest adiposity, including the abdomen, buttocks, thighs, and carries a poor prognosis. While the peripheral types, it is uh, predilects areas of limited adipose tissue like the calves, forearms, hands, and feet. The role of biopsy is, is one is to exclude the calciphylaxis mimickers or the differential diagnosis, and we'll talk about this later. But the role is debated of biopsy. Why? But because it may provoke the production of new non-healing ulcers and infection. Biopsy is contraindicated for acral, penile, or infected lesions. Punch biopsy is safer than excisional biopsy, and the yield of the biopsy improved with a double punch technique, and uh, usually the site of biopsy is from the active lesion margin. The histopathologic features include epidermal necrosis, intimal fibroplasia of the dermal and panicular arterioles, thrombosis of the dermal and panicular arterioles, and extravascular calcium deposition. The biochemical abnormalities include hyperphosphatemia, hypercalcemia, elevated serum parathyroid hormone, raised kidney function tests, anemia of chronic, chronic renal failure, and neutrophil leukocytosis, 
due to wound sepsis. The plain X-ray will show a net-like pattern of calcification. What are the calciphylaxis mimickers or the differential diagnosis of calciphylaxis? Among them, warfarin-induced skin necrosis, pyoderma gangrenosum, cholesterol embolization, oxalate vasculopathy, necrotizing vasculitis, nephrogenic systemic fibrosis, and perprafalminans. Both uremic and non-uremic calciphylaxis are associated with significant morbidity and mortality related to the non-healing wounds, <coughs> severe pain, infection, frequent hospitalization, and the adverse treatment side effects. The treatment or the management requires a multidisciplinary team, including nephrology, dermatology, dermatopathology, pain management physician, burn and plastic surgeon, and a nutrition specialist. The calciphylaxis treatment includes modification of the risk factors, pain control, wound management, nutrition support, and sodium thiosulfate, and the correction of calcium and phosphorus and phosphate abnormalities. The goals of the wound management is, the con is to control the exudate to prevent infection, facilitate wound healing, <coughs> and keep the wound bed free of necrotized devitalized tissue. Surgical and chemical and maggot debris more, and lastly, hyperbaric oxygen. The pain management is highly important as uh, Calciphylaxis is very painful, and the opioid analgesics are usually gabalin and pregabalin are used to control the severe pain, while tick care, morphine, codeine, and hydrocodeine should be avoided in dialysis patients. Why? Due to their accumulation of neurotoxic metabolites. <coughs> A new treatment of calciphylaxis is the intravenous sodium thiosulfate. It is a reducing agent. It acts as an antioxidant vasodilator and a calcium chelator. It is administered as 25 milligram intravenously in 100 millimeter of normal saline given over half an hour for each dialysis patient three times per week but it has a major side effect, which is the development of metabolic acidosis. The correction of the calcium and phosphorus abnormalities is by Sinac Calcet, 300 milligram daily for five months, biophosphonates and etidronate, 200 milligram orally daily for two weeks, other measures that includes patients on warfarin who develop calciphylaxis should consider discontinuation of warfarin and the news of the newer anticoagulants such as Plavix and the role of the pyrothyroidectomy is controversial. It should be avoided in patients without proven primary hyperthyroidism. And it is indicated only on documented cases of primary hyperparathyroidism. <coughs> Despite the intensive combined treatments, the prognosis of calciphylaxis remains poor. The overall one-year survival is 45% while the five-year survival rate is 35% only. Patients with proximal calciphylaxis have the worst prognosis and the infection accounts for 60% of the mortality. Take-home message or summary, 
Calciphylaxis is a rare but life-threatening condition. It is an ischemic small vessel vasculopathy with controversial multifactorial pathogenesis. It is a disorder of the cutaneous dermal and panicular microvascular occlusion caused by thrombosis and occlusion of the arterioles. It is predominantly seen in end-stage renal disease patients on dialysis. Also, it can develop in non-dialysis chronic kidney disease patients. Calciphylaxis has no approved therapies, while intravenous sodium thiosulfate is used with some success. Successful management requires a multidisciplinary team or effort. At last, I would like to thank all of you for your kind attention. Thank you, Dr. Benhawi, for this uh, excellent presentation. Uh, our next speaker, Dr. Iman. Dr. Iman, uh, I will know in uh, name. Uh, and we know her since a long time. And Dr. Iman, professor of dermatology, Banha University. Uh, she has a very excellent presentation. Many times I attend with her. And uh, inshallah, I hope to enjoy with uh, her about for the lip dermatosis. Welcome, Dr. Iman. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شكرا جزيلا دكتور جمال على ال presentation أو introduction شكرا جزيلا لأستاذي الكبير أستاذنا كلنا أستاذ دكتور مصطفى أبو زيد على يعني استمراريته والجهد اللي بيشيره على عاتقه لاستمرارية هذا المؤتمر وهذه الجمعية الأم اللي الحقيقة فعلا إحنا كلنا بنجين لهذه الجمعية اللي تعلمنا فيها من وإحنا نواب لسه صغيرين ولا زلنا بنتعلم سنة بعد سنة كل التبس and tricks اللي هي فعلا لما بنسمعها خلاص والاستابلشت مش ممكن تطلع من ذهننا أبدا ده طبعا نتيجة العلم الكبير والتمكن اللي بيقدر يوصل المعلومة بأسهل طريقة وفي نفس الوقت بأقوى يعني بنفت موجودة فيها شكرا جزيلا دكتور مصطفى ربنا يبارك في حالتك ويجيك الصحة والعمر وشكرا لأساسيتي الأفاضل الكبار اللي أنا شايفاهم قدامي دلوقتي وتحية جميلة أن يكون لنا مكان يفضل دايما هو بيت العيلة اللي بيجمعنا كلنا النهاردة أنا حبيت أتكلم الحقيقة في موضوع لاحظت بشكل كبير إن هو يعني ميزد في أغلب الـ scientific meetings اللي بنعملها كلنا بنتكلم على الليب فيلرز ونبقى فرحانين قوي لما بيبقى فيه ساشن ليب فيلر ونجري عليها لكن الديرماتوزيس اوف ذا ليبس يعني تو جريت اكستند الحقيقه في ديزيز منها امتى ما بنذكرهاش كتير رغم ان احنا بنشوفها حتى لو بنشوفها انفريكوينتلي Lips are highly uh, visible and may display clinical manifestations of local as well as systemic inflammatory, allergic, irritant, and neoplastic alterations. Fortunately, the lips are easily accessible. For diagnosis of any lip abnormality, we have to evaluate the patient collectively. We have to take proper history. We have to inspect the lesion properly we have to palpate the labs and not to miss to examine the lymph nodes, especially the cervical, submandibular, and submental lymph nodes. Proper pathology and microscopical examination, uh, proper history uh, about the different medications taken by the patients, history of any allergies, and special habits like smoking, all these are very important clues that can help for the proper diagnosis. Evaluation should begin with a complete history and evaluation of the lips as well as the head and neck. Specific findings should focus on the history of onset and the clinical course, followed by a thorough review of systems and complete mucocutaneous examination, including the scalp, hair, palms, soles, nails, and genitalia. 
a comprehensive review of topical and systemic medications, allergies, and oral habits can be critical to targeting the etiology of conditions of the labs. The history and examination findings should dictate further laboratory and or uh, histologic assessment. Developmental conditions of the labs. Lip prints. لأول مرة الحقيقة كنت أعرف إن اللبس لها prints بالضبط زي ال fingerprints. Lip prints are normal patterns seen on the vermilion of the lips. The vermilion, of course, is the lips, which is, let's say, the lips that are on the rouge. Lip prints are normal patterns seen on the vermilion of the lips that appear as folds, wrinkles, and grooves. Because lip prints, much like finger prints, are unique to each individual, they are often used in investigations at crime scenes. Lip patterns don't alter with advancing age, inflammation, trauma, or environmental factors. A lower lip, زي ما إحنا شايفين فيها some sort of abnormality. The abnormality دي سهل جدا إن هي تحدد the individual ده في حالات the crimes وبالتالي they are of very important medical legal importance. The lip clefts, سواء the unilateral or bilateral or associated with cleft palate, كلها حاجات طبعا بنشوفها كتير ده من ال one of the most common congenital abnormalities. إحنا مهمتنا نحنا بس just to check. لكن بعد كده طبعا التريتمنت بتاعها بيكون باي بلاستيك سيرجنز او اي ان تي سيرجنز بيجمنتد ماكيولز اوف ذا لابس ار ميني لابيال ميلانوتيك ماكيولز لابيال ميلانوتيك ماكيولز او فوكال ميلانوزيس ار بيناين بيجمنتد ماكيولز اون ذا فيرميليون ذيس بيجمنتد ماكيولز ماي ريبريزنت اف ليدز بوست انفلاماتوري هايبر بيجمنتيشن او ذا ستيغماتا of Bethsjugger syndrome or Addison's disease. Melanotic macules may appear on any mucosal surface. However, most commonly, they are found on the vermilion palate, buccal mucosa, and gingiva. Macules may be blue, black, or brown, according to the depth of pigmentation. Typically, lesions are solitary, but multiple macules may occur. The labial melanotic macules are usually well circumscribed and have an average diameter of four to six millimeters. A lesion between commonly benign, lacking we have to keep in consideration the presence of malignant melanoma. Petzjager syndrome is an autosomal dominant condition characterized by macular hyperpigmentation in early childhood with a beside need for differentiation in early childhood and by hematomatous polyps of the gastrointestinal tract. We مهم أوي إن أنا أفرق the gastrointestinal polyps ما بينها ما بين the Gardner syndrome في the Petzjager syndrome بتكون بينين أما the Gardner syndrome ممكن تكون associated with malignant transformation. Addison disease or primary adrenal insufficiency is characterized by diffuse hyperpigmentation of the skin and oral hyperpigmentation with a predilection for traumatized areas and skin folds as well as systemic findings that include weight loss, fatigue, hypotension, and electrolyte abnormalities. The pigmentations for Addison's disease commonly between on the inner surface or mucosal surface of the lips, between on the tongue, ممكن كمان تكون على Albright syndrome is characterized by a triad of poly, uh, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia uh, in the bone, uh, pre uh, precocious puberty, and pigmentary abnormalities of the lips. When I have a bardo on the fara mabenha, and I'm going to issue pigmentations just if he is oral mucosa, while I can be laying pigmentations a la el body. El vascular findings is a very important and common issue. Venous lacs of the lips are common asymptomatic, blanchable blue to purple macules or papules that range in size from two to eight millimeters. The lower lip is more commonly affected than the upper lip. Their prevalence increases with advancing age and with sun exposure. 
Histologically, a single layer of flattened endothelial cells surrounded by relatively thick fibrous tissue is noted. No treatment is indicated because these rarely bleed, but they may be cosmetically offensive. In such cases, pulsed dye laser or surgical excisions are effective. Caliber persistent artery, uh, this is a, uh, to some extent congenital abnormality when evaluating the mucosal surface of the lip, a superficial tortuous vessel may be visible and is termed caliber persistent artery. مجرد ان احنا نقلب اللور لب بنلاقي الارتري انجورجد بالشكل ده الحقيقه الليجن دي ممكن نكون بنشوفها كتير لكن وي ميس ذا دايجنوزس ذيس كومن فاسكولار انومالي اوكيرز اون ذا لور لب ان 80% 8 تايمز بات ذا ابر لب اند ذا بالات مي اولسو بي افكتد The size and superficial location make the caliber persistent artery, persistent artery palpable, uh, usually a few millimeters inferior to the vermilion border. Occasionally, it may appear as a sessile elongated nodule of variable size, which may raise concern for a benign or malignant tumor. Non-invasive high-resolution Doppler ultrasound may confirm the presence of an artery, eliminating the need for biopsy. Usually, the treatment after confirmation of the diagnosis is by surgical excision. Trauma-associated findings of the lips. A mucosal is a benign pathology entity of the minor uh, salivary glands that results in mixoid saliva accumulation below the mucosal surface. احنا عارفين ان salivary glands are three types. The mixoid salivary glands are present in the uh, inner surface of uh, the lips uh, and uh, cheeks. The mixed salivary glands are present in the sublingual salivary glands and the watery uh, saliva is present in the parotid gland. Clinically, most mucoceles appear as a single but often recurrent translucent fluctuant 0.5 to 1.5 cm cyst-like pink papular swelling on the lower lap. Other locations include the floor of the mouth, buccal mucosa, ventral tongue, or soft palate. زي ما احنا شايفين السيست هنا اوف ذا ميوكوسيل واضح ان الـ ان ده لبس اوف يانج تشايلد لان التشيلدرنز بيبقى دايما عندهم حب السكلينج تو ذير لبس فبالتالي بيعملوا انجوجمنت للسليفري جلانس الموجوده وبالتالي تتحول لسيست بالشكل ده. Due to the tendal effect some mucoceles may appear bluish the patient may not a thick mixoid or sweat testing extravasation with rupture of the mucosal. With repeated episodes, fibrous scarring may spread to adjacent glands with potential increased nodularity. Infectious and inflammatory disorders of the labs. Uh, angular colitis is a very common uh, 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 disease. Angular colitis is characterized by painful fissures of the oral commissures that extend from the mucosal surface to the cutaneous skin. Maceration, erythema, crust, and scale are often present. Uh, lip uh, liquor colitis is very common, especially in children. But the genie, the, the same picture of angular colitis, like in between, are that and associated with perioral uh, inflammation. The pathology is often multifactorial. Unilateral involvement tends to be short-lived and has been attributed most often to local trauma, especially those wearing unfitted dentures. Uh, second, the infection with oral candidiasis is a very common. Herpes labialis, colinarfino, just to uh, remember. Inflammatory dermatoses of the labs are so many. The first one is exfoliative colitis, which is a non-specific term that describes several chronic conditions. It is characterized by chronic scale and irritation of the vermilion with the lower lip, often more severely affected than the upper lip. Patients may complain of dryness, itching, or tingling. Causes of exfoliative lip uh, findings include atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, and the chronic irritant or allergic reactions to cosmetics and or uh, flavin uh, flavonoids. 
uh, exacerbating factors include, uh, ممكن أخذ uh, دقيقتين كمان. Exacerbating factors include stress, chronic mouth, breathing, lip uh, licking uh, or sucking, and uh, lip picking or biting. Treatment with topical corticosteroids and topical calcineurin inhibitors may be effective depending on the underlying etiology. And secondary, embigitization uh, may complicate the clinical presentation and must be uh, treated. Uh, lesions simulate impetigo, uh, secondary infection. Atopicalitis patients with an atopic diathesis, which includes asthma, allergic rhinitis, and dermatitis, are commonly affected. Continuous clinical findings range from acute eczematous vesicular eruptions to subacute crusting and scaly rashes. Atopic dermatitis is a very common uh, associated uh, diagnosis in children with chelitis. If a child has chelitis, the first possibility is to atopic dermatitis, and then you can put a lip liking. Allergic contact uh, uh, chelitis, contact chelitis is characterized by uh, circumoral edema, erythema, rotation, and or scale that may involve both lips as well as the surrounding skin. Contact chelitis may be due to an immunologic allergic reaction or more commonly may be due to an irritant reaction. Allergens include personal care products, balms, aerosol products, uh, medicaments, or foods. Lupus erythematosus GLE may present in the oral cavity and affect the lips. Distinctive oral plaques of GLE appear as uh, some burst red uh, and white plaques with characteristic peripheral radiating striations on the buccal and labial mucosal. يعني بنشوف فيها لون أحمر ولون أبيض في نفس الوقت. Red and white overall plaques may also affect the vermilion. حضرتك ما زودتك ليش مش كده؟ Okay. Although both uh, lips may be affected, the lower lip possibly uh, due to increased trauma or increased exposure to ultraviolet is affected in 71% of cases. That, uh, we have to keep in our mind uh, that uh, um, GLE can affect the lips. Also, Jugren syndrome uh, and uh, with uh, zero stomia, uh, the tongue is very dry. Uh, there is uh, dysphagia and also the oral mucosa uh, is the dry. Uh, this is also uh, xerotic uh, chelitis in uh, Jugren uh, syndrome. Uh, Clitis glandularis is a rare inflammatory disease of the minor salivary glands. Patients complain of thick, bumpy lips. أنا عندي دقيقتين برضه كمان لو ممكن هم اللي قبلي كانوا يعني وفروا لي وقت شوية. Gill uh, colitis glandularis usually there is enlargement of the size of the lips, especially the lower lip. لما نعمل squeezing ليها بتطلع ال ال saliva. Uh, colitis glandularis tends to preferentially affect uh, light-skinned individuals uh, and men. It mainly affects adults. Those case reports in children and adolescents are uh, documented. The different clinical pictures li el colitis uh, glandularis will be worrying here when I'm about to have squeezing the viscid or mixoid saliva that comes from the salivary glands. الأورال سرايسس كلنا عارفينها ممكن تأفكت اللبس ممكن تأفكت اللانكس بتجيني جيوغرافيك تانك في حالة السسبشيس of سرايسس of the lips we have to make a full examination to the body very rare ان اللبس سرايسس تيجي لوحدها من غير ال من غير سرايسس فالجاريس or other seretic lesions in the body the drug associated colitis uh, uh, drug history but uh, drugs can be associated with uh, colitis especially the anti convulsants 
and you plus the conditions, among them actinic colitis, which is very common, of course, in Egypt. Commonly, it will affect the lower lip more than the upper lip, because it is more sun exposed. Deep to the pre-malignant lesions can transform to squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma always be with it early metastasis. Usually, it is associated with metastasis when it is diagnosed. So, we all know. Lesquema cell carcinoma, how uh, to diagnose. In conclusion, the labs are highly visible and cosmetically important anatomic structures. Alterations may be distressing and disfiguring. Knowledge of the appropriate uh, uh, examination technique and recognition of the normal and abnormal findings is necessary to evaluate the labs, which may display clinical manifestations of systemic disease or pathologic uh, abnormality. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Dr. Iman Sanad, for your uh, interesting. lip affection. Shukran, Dr. Iman. يعني حاجة طبعا interesting جدا. وإحنا كأننا يعني خدنا subject كامل من كل كتب الإيمانيتك حقيقي. بس أنا عايز أعرف. اللي برنت بيتهم بإيه بيبقى عض حد ولا بيبقى إيه بالضبط يعني إيه اللي برنت السيجنيفيكانس بتاعها إن كومباريزون للفينجر برنت مسألة العض دي من أهم ال ال items لأن ده يعني مود of defense فال العض بيبقى مهم جدا من ناحية من ناحية تانية كمان الكيسينج The kissing, like in fear, rape, or something like that, be a part of the things that we can take. Wallah, I mean, information new and important, especially in the time of the turbulence that we are in. Okay. Yes, yes, they will fingerprint, we preserve it all, uh, all, the, all over the, the age, irrespective of any disease uh, exposed to uh, or affect the patient. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think that if you fingerprint, if you footprint, if you lip print, if you eye print, and I just want to add the home message from the doctor Dr. Iman, he is a good thing. نخلي بالنا ايه الموست كومن حاجات فيدي نشوفها من هتعرف شخص سرايس هتعرف انما المشكله اللي هي الفرق بين الكونتاكت ديرماتايتس والبيري اورال ديرماتايتس والكونتاكت ديرماتايتس موست بروبابلي سببه ايه يا جماعه؟ معجون السنان ونمص البرتقان مص الفاكهه اكل الطماطم خلاص ودي علاجها ايه العيان يستعمل شاليمو دي نمره واحد خلي بالك ما بين الكونتاكت بيبقى اللب واخده السكن وزود فري ريم البيري اورر في حد ورا البيري اورد الماتايتس بيبقى فيه فري ريم سكن ما بين اللب وما بين البيرلوك ديرماتايتس نخلي بالنا من الحته دي بقى والليبنج طبعا هي قالتها الليكنج اللي في اطفال دايما يقعدوا يمصوا يطلعوا ده فيري كومن وبتيجي مشكله وهنا بيبقى لازم الدكتور يبقى يعني شديد قوي مع العيل لان هيقول له مثلا يخوفه يخوفه عشان يبطل العاده ديت طبعا دور خد الام والاب على جنب قول له نشوف الولد دوت في حاجه مشاكل نفسيه عنده 